Hello everyone, this is Valerie Johnson, Certified Life Coach, and I am happy to be here today. My job, my purpose, my mission is to close the gaps, the gaps from where you are to where you want to be. My job is to, to, to review the gap, to close the gap, and get you in a position and in alignment with who you are destined to become. My goal is for you to be, do, and have the life of your dreams. And I want to say thank you for clicking on this or listening to this audio program today. Today we're going to talk about 10 simple yet amazing ways to find your unique gifts. Do you know that your your wealth, the wealth you seek is in your gifts? And if you want to be wealthy and not just wealthy financially, wealthy spiritually, wealthy healthy, wealthy in every sense of the word, if you want to be wealthy you have to tune in, tap in, and turn on to your gifts. These are the gifts that God gave each and every one of us. And when you learn to assess what they are, to walk in them on a daily, consistent basis, then you will become wealthy. You're wealthy the moment you start doing so. And you will experience the spiritual wealth and then the physical wealth, the material wealth. So let's get started. Why find your gifts? Why continue to listen to this audio program? Here's a fact that researchers have proven time and time again. People get energy from using their unique gifts and they lose energy when their focus drifts from using them. Do you ever wonder why you feel so tired at work and yet so energized on the weekends? Now I asked a photographer friend of mine who works her regular 8 to 4.30 job and then on the weekends she works her photography business. I asked her to describe in a word or two what a Monday morning feels like. Her words exactly, tired. And she said so with, with uh, such a way that you knew exactly what she meant. Some of you listening can probably relate to that Monday morning feeling. Now I asked her the same question regarding a Saturday where she's, been, where she's scheduled to work a wedding from 3 p.m. to 11. So it's the same eight hours. Her words, tired, but in a good way, a good tired. And she also added, with this I feel enthusiasm, I'm happy, I'm energetic, and I'm tired. I may be tired of being on my feet, but I would go another eight hours if somebody called me to do another wedding. You see, people get their energy from using their unique gifts. And they lose energy when their focus drifts from using them. And by the way, as I said before, the wealth you seek is in your gifts. My friend the photographer, she earns more money in one wedding than she does in a week of work. So it's very simple. What are you willing to invest to make your life happier? To feel like you're operating on all cylinders and to finally feel the freedom of being who you are meant to be. Doing what makes your heart sing and having what you've always desired to have for yourself, for your family, and for those you love. Your gifts they represent the platform for your greatest wealth, your most authentic happiness, and your biggest sense of freedom. So if your gifts give you all these things, isn't it worth continuing to listen so you can find out what yours are today? It is in your gifts that your champion self arises. If discovering your gifts gives you all these things, what on earth are you waiting for? You know, Michael Jordan, by most accounts, is considered one of the greatest basketball players ever. He had the physical characteristics that helped him become a great player. And he also had to strengthen those physical characteristics, which means he had to work, he had to lift, he had to run up and down the bleachers, he had to exercise, he had to, he had, he had to build upon what was already there. Now what about court intelligence? The ability to feel where your opponent is going, to anticipate plays, to know when it came to the last shot, he could profess gladly, loudly, willingly, give it to me. His unique gifting was his court intelligence, his strategy, and his inner confidence. Basketball was his platform to share those gifts. He is considered a champion. So when you find your gifts, you find what makes you a champion. And let me tell you something. The world loves champions. No one wears the jersey of the worst player in the NFL or NBA or any other sport. But everybody wears the jersey of the champion. That jersey's constantly sold out. So on this audio program, I'm going to provide you with 10 unique ways to find your gifts. Because a life without the discovery of your unique gifts is not a life at all. In fact, it's a lie. 
And we're going to expose the truth on this call. So get ready. And these are the things that you can do today and feel the immediate relief, the immediate benefit, the immediate I have a purpose tomorrow. And these aren't theory, but these are practical application. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, here's the first technique. Mind your past, specifically the pain-filled memories for the clues to your gifts. Now Napoleon Hill said, every adversity carries with it the seed of an equivalent or greater benefit. This thing happened and you survived it. So how did you survive? You know, when I was a child, my parents argued a lot. And, and let me tell you, they're still married to this day and they still argue. But oftentimes it was quite unbearable. I mean, they really got heated. Now, during these heated times, I would go into the bathroom and I would just look into the mirror, look into my own eyes, and I would chant this one word, me, 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 me. And as I did it, I began to drift away. I just tuned out the noise of what was going on and I tuned in to the truth that I have nothing to do with their mess, that I am my own person, and even in the midst of chaos, peace is available to me. Now see, this, friends, is a great gifting, the ability to remain calm in the midst of chaos. So here's the question. What professions use this skill, somebody with the ability to remain calm in the midst of chaos? Which ones of those professions speak to my soul? What can I do now to get into those types of positions? So you got to follow these types of questions down the rabbit hole to lead to your greatest, most confident you. So mind your past, specifically the painful memories, and look for clues to your gifting. You may have had parents that argue. How did you overcome it? You may have had a, a traumatic tri childhood experience. How did you survive it? When you begin to look at these things and stop looking at the past as, oh, this thing happened to me, but instead look at it as, oh, this happened, so it would clue me in to who it is I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to do, and all the things that I'm supposed to have. You see, when you shift your mentality, when you shift your mindset to this thing happened for me, then you can mine it for the gold, G-O-L-D, that will help you accomplish the goal, G-O-A-L. So that's number one. Second technique. Ask your friends this question, and I'm gonna re I'm gonna read it to you exactly as you ask them. So you're gonna say to your friends, "I'm discovering what I'm good at, and I want to ask you, can you tell me how I've contributed to your life?" And if you want to, you can make it into a game. Meaning, a lot of times you see on Facebook, there's these games like the number game is a popular one. You can offer a number from 3 to 7 and that number represents the qualities or contributions that that person is going to tell you you've added to their life. Then you can ask them to give you a number and you'll do the same and post it as their status. See, you know, people love games. And if that's what you need to do to find out this information, make it a game. Everybody loves games. So again, ask your friends this question. I'm going to repeat it. I'm discovering what I'm good at. And I want to ask you, can you tell me how I've contributed to your life? And do so in three or four or five or six or seven different words or characteristics. Once you have all that information, and I would suggest that you ask anywhere from five to ten people that know you and know you in different walks, whether it be your friends, your family, your co-workers, now, and, and get that down, and then you're going to have, if you ask ten people and they give you five different things, you'll have fifty characteristics. Read through those characteristics and decide which one of those really accurately represents me. Then you start going again down the rabbit hole. You're going to hear me say that a lot, the rabbit hole of discovering where those lead and you do so by asking yourself questions so for instance if one of the characteristics is you know you've added peace to my life you ask yourself okay well how did I add peace to this person's life what activities did I do what did I say and you find that a lot of people are saying that same thing you added peace to my life you ask yourself those same questions and before you know it you figured out that you have some amazing ability to say certain prayers or to say certain things and maybe you have this divine intuition and maybe you can use that from a standpoint of counseling and then you find out well maybe you know I've always helped people with their problems maybe counseling is for me and then all these bells and these whistles start popping off in your mind and you start feeling like oh my god this is my calling and then you get to work making it happen. See how this works? You gotta, you know, uh, you have to discover yourself. You have to ask yourself these questions and you have to have the courage to answer them honestly, not with what you think you might be, but what you actually are and then where you want to be. 
So that's number two. Number three, ask yourself to describe yourself in five words. And let me say that again. You're going to ask your own self to describe yourself in five words. Then five more, then five more, then five more. You know, that's 20. So narrow those down to five words. Again, so here's how this would sound in real life. Okay, Valerie, I'm going to describe myself. I'm going to describe me in five words. Well, I'm charming. I'm peaceful. I'm funny. I'm energetic. Uh, I'm silly. Okay, five more. I'm calming. I'm serious. Um, I got a great sense of humor. I love to laugh. I love to make people laugh. And then five more and five more and so on. And even just there, I noticed a theme. Laughter. I, li I love to laugh. I love to feel good. I love to make people feel good. So here's what you do when you've asked yourself these things and you write them down and they could be over the they could be over the course of five days if you want to add or four days if you ask yourself this each morning or in the evening or you could be do this over one day ask yourself in the morning because you might feel different in the morning ask yourself in the, in the middle of the day ask yourself just before bed and wake up and ask yourself one more time once you have those things group them what do they have in common is there a theme if you apply those words and turn them into action words, what actions would those be? How can I incorporate those actions into my tomorrow? What specifically will I do different tomorrow to invite these characteristics on an intentional basis? How simple is that? It's so simple, but it's so profi profound. If you just do this, this one alone, this number three alone, you will immediately begin to see a shift in your life where you feel better because you're going to be inviting your authentic self to come forth in a more intentional way. And when you're intentional about who you are authentically, it's amazing. You feel like you're always firing on all cylinders, and that's an amazing way to be. So number three is one of my favorites. Number four. Mind your last decision and review the reasons why you made it. Once again, there's gold in the process of looking back. You know, the Monday morning quarterback, there's gold in looking back. So, for instance, that last job or promotion you took, why did you say yes? Or why did you say no? Think about your spouse right now. Why is this person your mate? What made you make the decision to say, yes, I pledge my life to you? Now, I have to ask, not so much about your mate, but just about in general of these decisions. Is it the fear? Is there a fear of being alone? Or is it, is it the celebration that this person finally gets me? What do they get about you? You know, why did you take that position? Was it more money? Are you driven by money? Or was it that it brings forth some things that you really like about yourself? Do you like the company? What is What was the reason? Go down that rabbit hole again. You know, perhaps you'll discover that you have a huge gift of unconditional love. And you've just been using it in a non-efficient way. And this goes back to why did you, why did you select that particular mate? Again, you may have this huge capacity for unconditional love. So the key is now that I now that I realize I have this, how can I use it in a more efficient way? What environments benefit from unconditional love? And I'm using that as an example. So for instance, say you you select the mate and you fall in love, and this person is I won't go into it's just a, a person that you selected, and you decide that I did it because of unconditional love. So then you got to ask yourself, well, what environments benefit from unconditional love? And when you start asking yourself that, when you start going down that rabbit hole, you're going to hear me say that a lot. I probably should have called this going down the rabbit hole. But when you start going down that hole, then you'll decide, okay, you know what? What environments need unconditional love? Maybe I can go on a peacekeeping mission or uh, an aid relief mission to Africa. And I can pour out this unconditional love and teach others to do the same. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. You see how that works? You find out that you have this unique talent or this ability, and you be, and you found that just by asking yourself, looking back at your decisions that you've made, and you go from I have I, I why did I make this decision? I made it because of unconditional love. What can, who can benefit from unconditional love? People that totally feel in love. Who totally feels unloved? Maybe some of the women that are in those in the in the African villages in the in the places where fistula runs rampant, and they've been ostracized by their family. They were raped in a most violent horrific way and as a result they suffer from this horrific condition 
You think they could use some of that unconditional love that you have? I know they could. This is what I mean. Let me tell you something. Finding your gifts is serious. When you really start solving some problems, when you really start putting forth your best self and you start you start using those gifts in a way that that whew, in a way that changes people's lives. You you go, you imagine yourself taking this this peace-giving mission and you go over and you explain to these women how worthy they are, that they're still loved, they're still valuable, and this thing didn't happen to them, it happened for them. And I'm going to show you how it happened for you because the fact that you're here, you have sisters to connect with, and you have, I love you. I traveled all the way across the world just to tell you that I love you and to show you that you can still be loved. Whoa, that's life-changing. All because you asked yourself some questions and had the courage to go down the rabbit hole to find the solution. I love that one. Think on that. And let me just sidestep before I get into number five and tell you. I know some people may be thinking, yeah, that sounds great, but I don't have enough money for the peacekeeping mission. Or I don't have enough money to, to fly to Africa to go and, and, and save these people. You, you know what? You might not. You might not. But, but, right now, what can you do? Maybe you could start a letter writing campaign. Maybe you can find out where those hospitals are. And maybe you can start sending letters to these women and saying, listen, I don't know you, but I love you. I, 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 I could never imagine what you've gone through, but I support you. I believe in you. You have somebody all the way across the pond, all the way across the ocean sending their love. Maybe you can start a, a, a letter writing campaign. You got money for stamps? You got money for a letter? You got enough time to get on Google and research where these hospitals are? You see what I mean? It's a mindset, and we're going to get into that in another audio program. The mindset where that needs to shift so you can start inviting your gifts into your life. I know, I know for a fact, if you got that, your life is about to shift already. So let's go into number five. Number five, ask yourself this question. This year alone, what have I survived? Did you survive a breakup, getting fired, business failure? Now this is interesting because these are usually the memories that haunt you, right? But the shift, the process and shifting your perspective from what happened to me to what did I conjure up in me to survive it. You know, again, it goes back to survival. It goes back to survival. And when you get to a point where you can look at what happened to you and see it as a way of survival, then things about to shift. Let me let me let me go personal for a moment. This year, I survived the end of a relationship and one that ended uh, in, in good terms, but it ended nonetheless. So, how did I conjure up in me the ability to survive it? One of the techniques I used was a daily personal prayer in the form of what I call a 40-day love dare. And anybody that follows me on Facebook will see it periodically. I'll put, you know, day 28, day 29. In fact, as of this recording, I'm on day 39. Now, while I appreciate and, and value the book, The Love Dare, this is very different from that. This is something really different that, that is from a personal standpoint. It's prayers that I, that I spoke out loud. And I, and I didn't pray for me or for my, for my uh, uh, spouse, for my ex-spouse. But I pray for the other person involved in the situation. This is the one that people that, that I, not people, <laughs> let me own that, that I previously categorized as the enemy. And I didn't mean a dialed in prayer. I didn't mean like, oh, you know, just I pray for this person. No, I mean I prayed like for this person as though I prayed as though it was my mother or my father or my favorite aunt or somebody that I really truly love. And I prayed for this person and the prayer and I always started, Lord, let me let me pray and let me speak about this person in the way that I speak to myself. And let me speak about this person. Whatever I met, whatever I'm speaking about her, let it manifest in my own life. Now, when you start praying a prayer, let it manifest in my own life. You start speaking about somebody really different. You stop saying, oh, I hate this person. Or, oh, they make me sick. I wish they die. You stop saying those kind of things. Because when you start saying, when you start realizing that you are your brother, you're your brother's keeper. But in truth, you are your brother. When you start praying that way, it shifts your, your, your perspective. You stop looking at people as the enemy. And you start realizing, you start realizing that we're all in this struggle together. We're all in this journey together. And it shifts your heart. You see, I could have got bitter, could have got angry, could have got pissed off. And I did do all of those things. Absolutely, I did those things. But I also tuned in, tapped in, turned on to my gifts. And one of my gifts is, the, is peace. Peace is one of my gifts, the ability to, to live in a state of peace where there's chaos. And how did I do that? 
which is what I'm saying to you in number five. Look at what you survived. Look at how you got through it. Look at what you created as a result of it. I created this 40-day love dare. And, and I use that. And not only that, but it, from there, it created other love dares, uh, which I'm about. I'm sorry, let me rephrase it. Not love dares, but other dares, which I'm about to start uh, on Monday, the next one. And so, doing this for myself, asking myself, what did I survive? How did I survive it? And turning it into this 40-day love dare. For me, it, it made me tap into empathy, to faith to connection, to spirit, and to more than that. And to realize that just because something happens, it doesn't have to change you in a negative way. In fact, it can change you in a positive way, which was its intention anyway. So, again, number five. This year, what have you survived? How did you survive it? What questions did you ask? What did you birth from that? Look at that. These are tunes. These are, these are, uh, get, these are clues to your gifting. All right, so let's go to number six. What am I known for? What awards have I won? What have I been nominated for, noticed for, called out about? You know, years ago I won this peace award at my church at the time. And you know, one of my one of my um, gifts, I believe, is I always strive to see both sides of the coin. You know, to find some commonality and to seek a peaceful. You know, so then you got to ask yourself, well, what professionals excel at this skill? Mediators. So the thought of meeting with opposing sides, helping them out, and reaching a peaceful resolve. Now see, that brings delight to my soul. I love the idea of meeting with two people that are, that are just on opposite spectrums and, and talking to them, listening to them, asking them questions, find some commonality, reach a desire and end result, and they walk away complete and whole. And that's powerful to, to me. So something you may gloss over, you know, I really like peace or I really like kindness or, you know, I'm really, you know, I'm really a person who likes to serve. OK, so you got to ask your questions and, and I'm going to say the phrase again. You got to go down the rabbit hole. You got to ask yourself questions about that. You know, what does this mean? How, what can I do with this? What what in fact my fa one of my favorite questions is what professions use this exact skill? What professions use this exact skill? And when you start asking yourself that and you start reading the description of these different professions and you start realizing, that's me. That's me. So why aren't I doing that now? And again, that's where the mindset shifts and says, because I didn't know it, but now I know it and now I'm going to do it. Woo! That's powerful. Let's go to number seven. What do I hate doing? <laughs> You know, you got to think about this because when you have that intense hate, hatred about something, it's also a, a revelation of your gift. So, you know, you hate hearing about and what do you love doing? What do you hate hearing about? And, and I want you to think about this in words or phrases or movement, you know, both indicate, indicate clues to your gifting. And when you use your gift to solve problems that you hate which is what it's intended for anyway, you're going to feel great. And when you solve those problems, you're making the world better. So ask yourself, okay, what thing? What do I hate doing? What do I hate hearing about? What do I hate knowing about? Maybe you hate injustice. So how can you, how, how, I hate injustice. Okay, so what can you do? Well, I could use my gift of peace to create peace rallies. Ah, you see what happens when you start asking yourself these strategic questions? You start opening, opening the door of possibilities opening the door of possibilities and when you start doing that you start living in your gifts and when you're living in your gifts man the world every day is a brand new horizon every day is this blank canvas and you are the Michelangelo of your life every single day and that's an amazing way to live so ask yourself what do you hate doing what do you hate being what do you hate hearing about and then start asking those questions number eight what makes me feel alive? I love this question. What makes me feel alive? Think about this for a moment. This call right now, knowing that I'm speaking these things, I created these things, I tested these things, I researched these things, and I'm presenting these things to you, that makes me feel alive. You know, when I know I'm doing something that I know will help you feel better to help you feel more aware, to help you feel more encouraged, more empowered to live your ideal life. And you know, I can't stop. I, have, I, I record stuff all the time. I do. If I could do this every day, which I can and which I am, I do it every day. You know, I can study about this kind of stuff 
encouragement, empowerment. I can create recordings, you know, like this recording. And I create courses and it makes me feel alive. It makes me feel energetic. And if I think one, I give you, I'm going to give you 10 things today. And I think to myself, one person, if one person takes one of these and takes it to heart, goes down a rabbit hole and changes their life. I focus on that one person. And if I know that one person's life is forever altered because they took these 35, 40 minutes to listen to this, whew, it makes me feel alive. So what makes you feel alive? you feel alive when you coach soccer? Do you feel alive when you're writing poetry? Do you feel alive when you're painting? Do you feel alive when you're taking pictures? Do you feel alive when you're sitting at your desk and you're writing code? Do you feel alive? Find out what makes you feel. Do you feel alive when you're swimming? Are you an excellent swimmer? Can you teach swimming? So you see what I mean? You, when you ask this question, just the, very, just the very process of asking what makes you feel alive makes you feel more alive. And I want to tell you something. When you find what makes you feel alive and you create it and you create your life around it, when you find what makes you feel alive and you create your life around it, your work around it, when you find this, you'll never work another day in your life. Because work will feel like pleasure. Work is pleasure. And you'll be paid handsomely for doing so. So find out what makes you feel alive. Go down the rabbit hole. Explore it. Learn. And be. And, or find a way to incorporate it in your daily life. Alright. Number nine. What words or phrases have meaning to you? Let me tell you something. Whenever I hear the word kind or kindness. It touches something deep inside my soul. It's just something about that word. It's something about that word. And so I want to tell you that I follow that word down the rabbit hole to explore this crew, this clue. You know, kindness is like a standout. You know, and what it means to me is the world is tuned in to WIIFM, what's in it for me? And to be tuned in is to tune in to WIIFU. <laughs> what's in it for you? And when you celebrate the wiring of another person, even if it doesn't match your own, I believe that's kindness. When I accept that we and I are different, and that difference has no threatening qualities to me, but in fact, just knowing that you're different is, is, is a wonderful thing. That's kindness to me. And kindness doesn't mean that, that I agree with everything you say and everything that you do. But it means I love the way you are and I challenge you to become the highest version of yourself. And it means that I celebrate the falls, the fails, and the triumphs. It means that when you fall, I don't say I told you because you're not wired the way I am. It's, it just says, how can I help you? When you fail, it's the same thing. And when you triumph, I celebrate that you, that you found the way. You know, and kindness to me also means having really hard discussions that have a pure desire in result. And sometimes kindness means that I'm going to love you from a distance. And I might be, you know, I might be not, we might not be together physically, but on a spiritual level, I'm still sending kindness to you and love to you. You know, that's what, that's what that word means to me. So what words or phrases mean something to you? Another word that means something to me is champion. Champion is a big deal to me. I love that word. That word just speaks to me. Every time I hear the word champion, my ears just boop, pop up. The antenna, the antenna rears up and it's like, doo, 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 doo. and I just want to find it. I want to tune into that word. You know, so kindness, champion, alive, encouragement, motivation, success, amazing, enthusiasm, Teach, inspire. These are all words that have amazing meaning to me. They just they just get me. They just touch me. God. They just touch me in some way. So when you start finding those words or phrases that mean something to you, when they mean something to you, those again are clues. Write down those words or phrases. Ask yourself those favorite questions that I ask you. Okay, first ask, what does this mean to me? What what how do I define this word that means so much to me? How does it show up in my daily life? How does it show up in my work? What professions use this word or this phrase or this skill in a way that, that they use it, that they need it to be successful? What, 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 what occupations use that? Again, these are all clues. When you start asking yourself these questions, you're cluing into what, who you are being, who are you to become. 
the characteristics, what you are to do, the characteristics in action, and what you are to have, the result of being and doing who you authentically are. I want to say that again in a different way. All these nine tips so far are all about characteristics, words, phrases, etc. Becoming that. And then the doing, there's a be, do, and have. The doing is how you take those characteristics, turn them into action words, and that you're doing them on a consistent basis. And then as you're doing them on a consistent basis, you feel alive. You feel like you're operating on all cylinders. You feel at peak performance. And when you're at peak performance, you, be, you will achieve results. This is the having. These are the things that you desire. The manifestation of the, the big house, the cars, the, the spouse, the, the loving family, the vacations. This is the manifestation of the, of the having or whatever it is that you desire. When you be, do, and have, when you line up your head with your heart, and you, and you align those things with what God would have you to do. Not you trying to align what God would have you to do with what you want. But you line up your heart, your head, with what God would have you to do. To be, to do, and to have. Then things start to shift. And when they shift, man, they shift fast. You can hear me, I'm snapping my fingers because they shift that fast. These shiftings start happening. And it's amazing. It's amazing because, again, when you're operating in your gifts, that's when you're a champion. That's when you are a champion. And speaking of champion, as I told you before, that's one of my favorite words. You know, as a child, I heard this song, and this song touched me as a kid. And here, all these years later, 30-something years later, it still touches me. And the song is Queens, We Are the Champions. Let me read you some of the lyrics. It says, I paid my dues time after time. I've done my sentence but committed no crime. I've made bad mistakes. I've made a few. I've had my share of sand kicked in my face, but I've come through. We are the champions, my friends, and we'll keep on fighting till the end. You know, this song is exactly who I am. I've done my sentence. I've committed my crime. I'm no better or worse than anybody else. We are all in the struggle. We've all done things we're not proud of. I've made mistakes. I've made a few. And I've had sand kicked in my face. But I've come through. And that's what this is all about. You have fallen. You've failed. You've messed up. But you're going to come through. If you're in the middle of your storm right now, you will come through. You will survive. I've come through. Because we are the champions. We were destined to be champions. We were equipped. Our DNA is set up to be champions. And when we understand and learn and live what our gifts are, we're walking as the champions walk. We're thinking as the champions think. We are teaching as the champions think. We are living as the champions live. And we'll keep on fighting to the end. You know, I'm going to stay on this battlefield until I die. That's an agreement that I've made. The battlefield of figuring out what it is I'm to be, to do, and to have, and to be those things, to do those things, and to have those things. That's my battlefield. And the end of the battle is when I take my last breath. Until that time, there's no quit. There's no give up. There's none of those things. I'm on the battlefield. I, another, another word or phrase that I really enjoy, or story. Also, I should add stories to this. But there's a story that I heard long ago about Cortez, who was the, I, I, I may get this wrong, but he was the Aztec uh, leader. And uh, Cortez boarded his ship with his men, and they were going overseas to battle. And they got to their destination to, to battle. And as they got off the ships, got their equipment, Cortez ordered his men to burn the ships. And they looked at him with surprise, and they said, that's our only way back. That's the only way we can get back to our wives, our children, our families, our livelihood, those ships. And you're telling us to burn those ships? And Cortez said, burn every single one of them. Burn them all. Because now you have no way of retreat. You must fight and you must survive. You must win or you will die. I have to remove from you all the escape route. So they burned the ships. They kicked ASS. And they went back to their women, their wives, their children, their livelihood. And they went back as champions. Because they gave everything they had. They left it on the field. 
And I encourage you. I implore you. You got to leave it on the field. Life is not a dress rehearsal. It's a one and done. This is our one shot. If somebody has gone and they've come back, hey, come and tell me about it. Before all I know, it's a one and done. One and done. One and done. This is your life. No dress rehearsal. Leave it on the field. You owe it to yourself to figure out what you were equipped to be here, to be, to do, and to have. And you owe it to yourself to get up every single morning and be the thing you were equipped to be, do the things you were equipped to do, and then have the things you were equipped to have. You owe it to yourself. So burn the ships. And number 10. Number 10 is a, a multitude of different options. My favorite is Strength Finder 2.0. It's a book that you can find right now. It was on the New York, Te New York Times bestseller list many times over. And it's a book uh, called Strength Finders 2.0 by Tom Rath. And what will help you identify is your top five gifts or, or styles. And so for me, mine is learner, intellect, uh, intellection, input, ideation, and positivity. No surprise there. But once you take the quiz and you discover these things, then it also gives you clues on what you can do, what you can be, what you can do, and what you're going to have. Again, three things that have, have rained through in this call. Be, do, and have. Going down a rabbit hole and asking yourself questions. So Strength Finder 2.0, buy the book, take the quiz, learn about yourself. Uh, those Briggs and Myers um, uh, personality tests that are all online and other well-known books. Um, you can obviously hire a life coach like me and I can help you. And you can also participate in the 90-minute We Are the Champions session that I take you through some of these things. You buy the book in advance. We go over the book. We create a strategy. We have some heart-to-heart -heart discussion. I ask you a lot of, we go through a lot of the techniques in this call and we figure out your gifts. We, we bring those to the surface. And then your tomorrow will never be the same. So why invest this time? Because you are the most important person in your life. And I want you to never forget that. You are the most important person in your life. Over the next days, I encourage you to complete these techniques, collect the data, and like I said, call me for the 90-minute We Are the Champion session. This is where we put all this stuff together, and we're going to empower you to make powerful changes today. I'm going to encourage you to sow your, your gifts into your current environment, and then equip you with a strategic, written plan of success to use tomorrow to wake up to this incredible gift called life. So I want to quickly... Uh, recap. All these are wonderful, powerful techniques. You can use the ones that speak to your soul, or you can use all of them. I like to suggest three things that you can do to use these techniques. Capture each one of these as you do this in writing, in audio, or video. You know, you you don't want to just you don't want to just dial in when you're doing these techniques. Take invest in yourself. Give yourself a few minutes. Really capture the process in writing as you go through one of these or all of these techniques in writing or again in audio or video, whatever works for you, whatever mode works for you. But when you do this, this is self actualization gold. G O L D. And what comes from it might blow your mind. And you want to catch this lightning in a bottle. It's your life and you are the most important person in it. Invest in yourself. Number two, don't judge anything that comes up. It came up for a reason. Dare to follow it down the rabbit hole and see what you can make of it. So don't judge anything that comes up. Anything that you ask people to describe you. Anything when you describe yourself. Anything that the, the strength finder tells you. In using any of these techniques, don't judge what comes up. Don't judge it. Instead, allow it. Be grateful for it. Thank the universe. Thank God that it came up. It came up for a reason. And remember, even if it seems as a negative technique, oh, I'm sorry, even if it seems as a negative gift, there are no negative gifts. So somebody says, oh, you know, you talk too much. You debate too much. Again, you ask yourself, well, what, what professions use someone who's a natural talker? natural debate person that debates a lot well attorneys mediation radio host maybe I can I could start a radio host controversial ideas did anybody say I had it that I think I had a good voice somebody say I had a good voice Wow look at the theme coming together I really enjoy talking I like talking about topical issues five you know fast forward to a few months later and you've got a number one talk show you see how this works don't judge anything that comes up receive it as a gift 
And number three, allow yourself to soar beyond the how or the financial constraints that may have plagued you and stopped you. This is what I mentioned before about the person with the unconditional love and they have the idea I should go overseas to do peacekeeping missions. And then that little that little champion killer inside says, you don't have enough money for that. Your car's not even running. How are you going to book a flight to Africa? Don't let that stop you. Have the idea. Write the idea down anyway. This isn't the time for I can't or that's not enough or if only. This is the time for what am I living for? How am I living in the zone? What if this girl was on fire? What if? What if this is the fire to ignite me? What if this is the prayer that I've been asking for? Lord, what am I supposed to do with my life? Well, I've given you 10 ways to discover that. And I want to tell you, all of this was prayerfully given to me. In other words, I didn't just sit down at my computer and just start writing things out. I researched. I studied the people that know what they're talking about. I prayed. I asked God, how can you, will you help me use my gifts to help others discover theirs? And all of this is a result of prayerful, tuned in, meditating time to come up with these techniques. So, I gave you a lot of things. A lot of things to think about. A lot. Forget thinking about it. We're past the thinking about stage. This is about effort. This is about getting out there and doing these things. All these things take no money to do, no time. No, I mean, they take time, but they take worthwhile time. You're not spending the time. You're investing the time. These are all great techniques that will help you. Listen, life is short. As I said before, this isn't a dress rehearsal. This is a real thing. The real deal. And what better way to live the rest of your life from this moment on, living it where you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on to who you are, what you are, and what you're supposed to be doing. You're gifting. Your gift is in your wealth. If you don't think you're wealthy, I'm going to show you that you're wealthy. Because when you find your gifts, you find your wealth. So I want to close this call, this recording, this conversation with a quote, and this is from Nancy Duarte, and she so elegantly stated, the future isn't a place you go to, it's a place you get to create. You get to create your future. And by doing these techniques, by learning about yourself, by discovering yourself, by thinking from an action standpoint, what is this, how can I apply it in my life, applying it in your life, and feeling the benefits, you're creating an amazing future for yourself. I want to say thank you so much for listening to this call, for downloading this call. Please go over to my Facebook page, The Wonderful Now Life Coaching. It's facebook.com slash now. So it's www.facebook.com slash now. Send me some, some shouts out on this call. Give me some, some things that you've done, how you've applied these techniques. Tell me some of your wow moments, some of the amazing things that have come of you applying these techniques, how you shifted your life. If you have questions, shoot me questions there. Post a question. I'll, I'll answer you within, I'll answer you very quickly. But I want to know. I want to know that you're learning your gifts. I want to know that you're learning your strengths, talents, and abilities. I want to know that you're applying these techniques in your life. And I want to know that your life is giving you some amazing freedom, giving you more happiness, and giving you the ability to achieve more success. So thank you so much. God bless you. And make today wonderful.